In this video, we'll introduce tables of data grouped in intervals. These are used when we have a continuous statistical variable, in other words, a variable that can take any value in an interval, or in general, when there are few repetitions in the data so that the absolute frequencies are very low. In these cases, it's convenient to group the data into intervals. This leads to a loss of precision, since now we identify every datum with the interval to which it belongs, but we gain in terms of a better understanding of the information obtained from these data. We'll consider intervals that are closed on the left and open on the right, that is intervals of the form interval closed in A, open in B, whose elements are x belonging to R, such that A is less than or equal to x, which is less than B. This interval includes the numbers that are between A and B. Also, because the interval is closed in A, it contains A, but since it's open in B, it doesn't contain B. Each interval will be identified with a number which is called the class mark of the interval, and which corresponds to its midpoint. We'll denote the class mark of the interval by x sub i. So the class mark of the interval AB is x sub i equal to its midpoint, which is a plus b divided by 2. Once we have the class marks, the way to build a table of data grouped in intervals is similar to how we obtain the table of simple data. In the first column, we include the intervals. In the second, the class marks corresponding to these intervals. And then we'll add a new column with the absolute frequencies f sub i, which are the number of data that belong to the interval in question. Finally, in the same way as for simple data tables, we can add a column for the accumulated absolute frequencies and another for the relative frequencies. Let's look at an example in which we'll obtain a table of data grouped in intervals. After the holidays, the 25 players of a soccer team squad were weighed. On the screen are shown their weights in pounds. As you can see, there's only one repetition of weights, where two of the players weigh 177 pounds. If we were to build a simple data table, all the absolute frequencies would be one, except the one corresponding to 177 pounds, which would be two. So a simple data table would be very long and wouldn't give adequate information about the statistical variable. In this case, then, it's convenient to group the data into intervals. Since the smallest datum is 147 and the largest is 193.5, we'll consider the intervals 145155, 155165, 165175, 175185 and 185195. Then we build a table of data grouped in these intervals of the statistical variable. In the first column we put the intervals that we've just identified. In the second column we put the class marks x sub i of each of the intervals, that is the midpoint which is the sum of the extremes of the interval divided by 2. For the first interval, 145155, the class mark x sub 1 is 145 plus 155 divided by 2, which is 300 over 2, which is equal to 150. So we put 150 in the second column next to the interval 145155. In the same way, we calculate the rest of the class marks, which is easy to do, because it's clear that the class mark of the interval 155165 is its midpoint, which is 160. The class mark of the interval 165175 is 170. The class mark of the interval 175185 is 180. 
and the class mark of the interval 185195 is 190. Now we add a new column with the absolute frequencies F sub i of each of the intervals, which is the number of data that belong to each of the intervals. Notice that in the interval 145155 we have two data points, so the absolute frequency is 2. In the interval 155165 we have 5 data points, so the absolute frequency is 5. In the interval 165175 we have 7 data points, so the absolute frequency is 7. In the interval 175185 we have 8 data points, so the absolute frequency is 8. Finally, in the interval 185195 we have 3 data points, so the absolute frequency is 3. At the bottom, we add these absolute frequencies and we obtain the total number of data points n, which in this case is 25. Now we can add a new column for the accumulated absolute frequencies, capital F sub i, of each one of the intervals. You already know that for each interval the accumulated absolute frequency is its absolute frequency plus the sum of the absolute frequencies of the intervals above it. The cumulative absolute frequency of the interval 145155 is simply its absolute frequency 2. The cumulative absolute frequency of the interval 155165 is its absolute frequency plus the absolute frequency of the intervals above it, 5 plus 2, which is 7. The cumulative absolute frequency of the interval 165175 is its absolute frequency plus the absolute frequency of the intervals above it, which is its absolute frequency plus the cumulative absolute frequency of the previous interval, which is 7 plus 7, or 14. The cumulative absolute frequency of the interval 175185 is its absolute frequency plus the cumulative absolute frequency of the previous interval 8 plus 14 which is 22. Finally, the cumulative absolute frequency of the interval 185195 is its absolute frequency plus the cumulative absolute frequency of the previous interval 3 plus 22 which is 25. As you know, the cumulative absolute frequency of the last interval is the total number of data points n, which is 25. Finally, we can add a column for the relative frequencies h sub i of each of the intervals, which are the results of dividing the corresponding absolute frequency f sub i by the data number n. We obtain that the relative frequency of the interval 145155 is its absolute frequency 2 divided by the data number 25 which comes out to be 0 0.08. The relative frequency of the interval 155165 is 5 divided by 25 which is 0 0.2. The relative frequency of the interval 165175 is 7 divided by 25, which is 0 0.28. The relative frequency of the interval 175185 is 8 divided by 25, which is 0 0.32. Finally, the relative frequency of the interval 185195 is 3 divided by 25, which is 0 0.12. At the end, we add these relative frequencies. It will always be 1, and this fact comes in handy in checking for possible errors. That's it for this video on tables of data grouped in intervals. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.